Sal! We're gonna boycott your fat pasta ass! Yo! Yo! Stop, put some cheese in that motherfucker, man. Extra cheese is two dollars. Two dollars? Yeah, two dollars. Hey, you can forget that shit. Fuck you! Okay, if you've seen Do the Right Thing, it's not hard to come to the conclusion that the character of Buggin' Out is annoying. He's loud, petty, aggressive, and instigator. His name is literally slang for overreacting. Fuck you! As we can see. I wondered why Spike Lee would include a character that was so over the top and seemed to embody the negative trope of the angry black man. Then it hit me. This was on purpose. Buggin' Out was modeled after the caricatures of blacks portrayed in minstrel shows. I know. Buckle up. I have evidence. Let's go. Just like famous minstrel show characters, Buggin' Out is labeled with a reductive nickname that he is only addressed by throughout the film. Buggin', what's up? Look, Buggin' Out, we're not hanging. Buggin'? Where the female? You know, Cotton, I'm making a picture called The Lion Tamer. The Lion Tamer? Uh -huh. Tell me, Cotton, how do you kiss your girl? Well, first you gotta... Next, if you compare the style of Buggin' Out and classic minstrel show characters, you'll see that they're both dressed in outlandish outfits that would be viewed as stereotypically black for that era. Buggin' Out is dressed in bright colors, Afrocentric patterns, and is rocking a black pride necklace if you look close enough. He is made to appear as though he's wearing the party city version of what a black radical would dress as. The minstrel performer, on the other hand, is conveying blackness the tribal zebra print of his vest and he's dressed in an oversized suit that purposefully exudes ridiculousness. Both are dressed in an over-the-top way that makes them appear cartoonish. There's also emphasis on the hair. Buggin has a zigzag fade that looks purposefully crazy and the white performers that are playing black are wearing quote nappy afro puffs that would seem wacky for them. And who could forget those eyes, the windows to the soul? Dressing bugging out in glasses that magnify his eyes and emphasizing them in every possible close-up shot makes it impossible not to associate it with this. The tradition of white mentor performers making their eyes as big as possible to convey the supposed irrationality of black anger and the cartoonish nature of blacks that was played for laughs. Okay, well, no, let's not get me sued. Not entirely. So during the popular years of minstrel shows, whites used the medium only as a means to mock the supposed inferiority of blacks. However, there were some black performers that performed in minstrel shows as a way to reclaim the mask and point out the inaccuracies of the caricature and the faults of the oppressor. And that is what we around here call badassery. Spike Lee is operating around this tradition. He creates the angry black man caricature of Buggin' Out only to deconstruct it. Buggin' Out's angry, but Spike Lee makes us consider why. How come getting a principal? A wall here. You want brothers on the wall? Get your own place. You can do what you want to do. Take, for instance, this scene. The audience is initially kind of inclined to agree with old long neck Sal. It seems like Buggin' Out's picking a fight. Like, come on, dude, it's a wall. However, when we look at the composition of the shot, we get an idea of the underlying message that Spike Lee wanted to convey. The shot transitions from an eye-level shot to a low-angle shot, taken from Buggin' Out's perspective, and we get a sense that this is not about merely the wall in Sal's restaurant. It's not about the wall. It's about the powerlessness that Buggin' Out feels as a result of this wall of overwhelming whiteness. So for Sal, the wall is his favorite celebrities that he gets to showcase, but for Buggin' Out, the wall represents another instance of him actively taking part in a system and receiving no benefits or representation. Buggin' Out's a part of this country. He's a patron at Sal's. But where's his representation? Where are his brothers on the wall? Oh, man, what is excuse me? Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Not only did you knock me down, you stepped on my brand new Fuck white Air Jordans that I just bought. And that's all you can say. Once again, here we go. Buggin' Out's overreacting. I'm sure he'll be able to clean the scratch off of his shoes. But, once again, the angles utilized in this shot show Spike Lee's intended message. A low angle is utilized upon Buggin' Out when he's surrounded by his posse to emphasize the power he retains as a man within the black community. However, when Clifton speaks back to him, he's not looking up at Buggin', it's at eye level, representing the lack of power Buggin' Out has outside of the black community. Oh, Why he feels he needs to overcompensate his masculinity by picking a fight over shoes. The blocking of this scene also supports this point. Clifton climbs atop his stoop while Buggin' Out is left at the bottom of the stairs screaming up at Clifton, almost as though there is some barrier keeping Buggin' Out from confronting Clifton fully. This stoop represents the hierarchies of masculinity. Clifton does not have to overperform masculinity because he wields the most societal power as a white man. Buggin' Out, who is on a lower societal tier because of his race, feels the need to act over-aggressive and tough as a means of overcompensating. He feels that his anger is obligatory to being a real man.
What? Who said that? Not me. Okay, so sure, white people don't have the best reputation of treating minorities like people in the past century, decade, year, months, days, but who's counting, right? So Bugging Out wasn't created to point out that white people historically have mistreated minorities because everyone pretty much already knows that. He was created in order to show one of the reasons for the divide between black and white Americans that allow stereotypes like the angry black man, among others, to get a chance to percolate in the first place. An unwillingness to listen to the arguments, opinions, accounts from oppressed groups that may make the oppressor uncomfortable with their role in the system. It's safe to say that in Do the Right Thing, no one really listens to anybody. This is particularly true for Bugging Out. On my block, in my neighborhood, on my side of the street. As mentioned before, whenever he brings up an argument, no one really gives him a chance to hear out his thoughts. He's immediately written off. Because I understand it. This is a free country. Man can live wherever he wants. You know, you're wasting my time. You just leave that shit alone. You should. You really should. Hey, get, yo, man, I spent much money in there. What are you trying to do? Or just outright threatened with violence. Suppose I busted your head. How would you... Moderate people like Sal, if you'd call him that, hate Bugging Out because Bugging Out forces them to be conscious of their included role in the system. Ever wondered why Sal screams for them to turn off Fight the Power whenever they enter the restaurant? Now, contrast Sal's reaction when he comes across someone like Jade, who makes it a point to make her anger palatable to other white people. Bugging Out, what good is that gonna do, huh? You know, if you really tried hard, Bugging Out, you could direct your energies in a more useful way. Yep, you guessed it. Sal just so happens to be weirdly obsessed with her. No, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you something special. Something very special, if you don't mind. Yeah. Adding up yet? Black people are cool, as long as we don't make you feel responsible for what you're doing to us, right? Don't believe me? Well, let's take a look at what happens when you don't make your anger palatable to white people. Rady Rahim is pretty much one of the only people that agrees with bugging out. Yeah, well, we shouldn't buy one slice. Spend one red penny up in there to leave us a focus of color up on that wall. That's what I'm, ta that's what I'm talking about, man. No. And he ends up getting publicly murdered in the street, so... Yeah. Get the fuck out the way, guys! Yeah, now we've got it. It only took eight minutes. So while I am always more than willing to concede that Buggin' Out is very extra, this does not mean that because I don't like his delivery style that his oppression is invalid. Seems pretty obvious, right? You'd think so, but sadly, a pattern in American history for all oppressed groups has been when they bring their issues to the forefront in a style that isn't necessarily appealing to the oppressor. You're looking for trouble. Suddenly, they're all troublemakers that need to be controlled. Are you a troublemaker? Is that what you mean? That cut sucker started all this shit. Or worst of all, responsible for our own systemic oppression. He's responsible for that kid's death. And so the people in privileged positions are able to shirk off any accountability for their role in the system. So if it's supposedly not the oppressor's fault and definitely not the victim's fault, it gets mistakenly labeled as no one's fault and is never addressed, allowing the oppression to continue as it has and most likely will unless moderate people begin to address these issues. Through the larger than life character of Bugging Out and his interactions with various characters, Spike Lee is able to communicate the truth behind black anger in the hopes that society will take as many steps to address the causes of black anger rather than just opting to silence black people.